It's a beautiful fall in Montana. We're having a great time. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to our basement. <laughs> you guys are maybe nervous. Is that true? Are we okay? Yeah. Yeah. Are we okay? Yeah. Uh, by round of applause, who's never seen a Notorious B.O.Z. show? So that's, why, that's why you're scared our front rows almost verge. None of you have seen this before. You have no idea what's about to happen. Uh, so here's how this show works, new friends. Uh, every Saturday night at 8, uh, we get to invite somebody uh, notorious from our community uh, to come down here and share some true stories from their lives. Uh, then those true stories are used as inspiration by our cast of improvisers to create scenes and characters and, uh, and create a whole show around it. Uh, we're not striving to reenact those stories, so if you're watching it being like, they're not even listening to that guy, what jerks, they're not doing it at all. We're trying to take ideas from it and place it in other places. That'll save you and me the conversation where I'm explaining the show to each of you individually after the show. Uh, so that's why I tell this part. Um, uh, it's uh, a lovely evening together. Uh, we get to meet all the weirdos who live in Bozeman uh, one by one uh, and introduce them to you if you don't already know them. Uh, often you're down here because of them. Uh, tonight, uh, we have uh, an LBC community member that we love very much. Uh, he competes in a lot of comedy shows. He places terribly in those. <laughs> uh, you'll be able to see him on November 13th, uh, right here, uh, doing a new show called The Short Straw. Welcome to the stage, Alex Speed. <laughs> Hello. Hi, everyone. I wasn't actually sure that this microphone would work. I just need it in my hands uh, because it's a nervous tick, and I'm not going to do stand-up right now. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so sorry. I just a gear kicked on. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm here to tell you guys some stories. We love stories. So can I... I, I thought I would do this in, in, in the most old-fashioned way possible and not prepare a single thing. Um, God bless America. God bless America and also all of you forever and ever. Amen. Because um, one time I saw Hank Green do this show and he didn't prepare anything and I was like, I can probably do that. <laughs> what an insane idea. Um, it's very fun. Also, sorry, this is bothering me. This is another stand-up thing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Alvin. Uh, can I can I have some suggestions and then maybe I'll, I'll tell a fun story off of them. Middle school. I like it. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> wow, middle school and pelicans. Oh no! Here's why that sucks is because um, as soon as you said middle school, I knew the exact story. <laughs> Just like immediately, I was like, oh no, I have to tell the time that I pooped in an IKEA. <laughs> I have to tell that story. There's no other explanation. Um, middle school is a hard time for me, okay, obviously, because look at me and the way that I act and the way that I talk. Um, and I, I would get really nervous. Uh, doctors would later call it IBS. Um, you know, in like sixth grade in Oklahoma, we didn't have that, right? Um, we just had Mr. Poopy Pants, and that was me. That was who I was, yes. And one time, my entire family was at my, they were at my parents' house. And there's not a lot to do in Oklahoma. Um, I don't know if you guys know that. And so one of the things that we would do is we would have people over and then we would say, we're all gonna go to Ikea today. <laughs> it's gonna be a big family outing and we're gonna go look at furniture we can't afford, right? So I have a very distinct memory of walking into an Ikea and realizing then and there, I didn't prepare for this in the correct ways, I don't think. It's a high stress environment and I'm in a, in a, a compromised position, I guess is what you could say. But I wanna be brave about it. And I know what you're thinking. The first thought is there are like a thousand bathrooms in Ikea. That was the problem, I think. I think it was confusing me seeing all of the fake bathrooms. Does that make any sense? I, I, I do think, because I remember, like, I just remember, like, walking past these bathrooms and being like, that's a beautiful white ivory toilet. And I'd love to get real up close and personal with one of those soon, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I couldn't do it. And I even remember, like, I remember walking around the fake bathroom section, and then, like, there's a beautiful blue 
blue wall and there are like nine toilets on the big beautiful blue wall and I was like none of these can help me <laughs> these are all prop toilets in some weird way um, and then I see those and then I take too big of a you guys know the poop fart gamble um, that's what I did I lost <laughs> the story now. Uh, I lost the poop fart gamble is what happened. Uh, in the middle of an Ikea surrounded by toilets. The irony is overwhelming. Um, just surrounded by toilets. <laughs> Shows my pants. Uh, terrible idea. Uh, the, the worst part about it is that I thought I like pulled it off. I was like, nobody knows. <laughs> There's no way. I was so stealthy about the way I just pooped my pants. And I don't know if you know this, you can't stealthily poop your pants. Um, and so, but I thought I was crushing it, right? I remember we're in like the bed section and there's all these beds and my friends, like my cousins are all like jumping up and down on the bed and I'm like, well, I certainly can't participate in this. Um, and then my oldest cousin comes up to me and he goes, uh, hey man, we all know you shit your pants. <laughs> Yes, and so <laughs> by myself, I had to go to the bathroom of an Ikea and throw away my favorite pair of camo underwear. Um, and I'm still sorry about it to this day. Uh, and that's my, that's my story. It's both my vocation and my. I have an uh, inferiority. I have a bit of an inferiority complex. Where does that come from? We'll get back to it. I promise. <laughs> it's just, well, I, I mean, it's just. I know that wasn't like directly connected to what you were saying, but I was thinking, you know, a lot more about where I'm from than where where you're from, and I. I sometimes I just talk a lot. I talk. It's kind of like the way that I relieve really anxiety. I just keep talking, and I and I try and say things about like how I'm big. Uh, but the reality, and then, yeah, yeah, uh, but what you know, you well, not, not in that way, <laughs> not in, in any way. In any way. What's a way you bring well, up being big? I mean, it's just if somebody was Give me say, an example, yeah, please. Uh, just if, role play <laughs> with me. So, so I, I, say, I say hello, and yeah, you yeah, say. I'm kind of a, I'm a big conversationalist. Oh. Yeah. yeah, you know, like actually a, much more natural than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of know all this. <laughs> so much to choose from. I can't count it a lot. Why do they make so many different shapes of desk lamps? Yeah. I don't know if we should touch them. Oh. I think they're just display. 
Well, it's not what a display is. Is like it's like a tester. You know, you do the the lotion. Do you ever do that when you're in the store and they get the lotion and it says it says tester and then you do you test the lotion at the store? Yes, of okay, course. Okay, good. Because I do. <laughs> Don't make me feel weird, Jeremy. No, no, I'm not. I'm not sure it's the only Of course, one. I fucking test. I mean, if I see, like, I see a tester, I see a desk lamp I can play with. I'm going right after. That's just a lot of pulling the the cord. You got to. How many times are you gonna pull a cord? Stop it! Just, stop it! <laughs> I don't want to be a couple that breaks up in Ikea. <laughs> How many people we, break we, up here? A lot. I mean a lot. A lot. And you know why? Because there's too many, it's the, it's the paradox of choice. There's too many decisions to make, so you make none. Yes, I understand. You're Other a professor, you your know a lot. I never went to grad school. One decision I'm a moron. <laughs> We're picking out something for our new apartment that we're definitely going to live in together. <laughs> and we're going to sign a lease for it. Don't back up like that. Like I'm going to hurt you or eat you or something. <laughs> yeah, we'll back up. Because I don't know where this is going. I thought we were going to, let's go to Ikea, let's shop for the apartment. That's how it sudden, felt earlier. Okay, until I touch the lamp. Well, I don't know. And what? I'm keeping the cat because I paid for its adoption. I day. hate I'm you. So sorry. I wish you were dead. <laughs> Let's go somewhere else. I don't know if we can get out of here without breaking up. Can we get out of here without breaking up? Oh my god. Or maybe this will bring us closer together. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe that's the whole Swedish plan. I don't know. I just, I just grabbed your arms and, and sort of... I didn't mind it. But then you didn't touch me back. Why didn't you fucking touch me back? Because you've been berating oh me about touching oh. desk lamps for an hour. We need to get a divorce right now. <laughs> You're right. It's oh. cursed. <laughs> Finally. What's in those meats? <laughs> They're only a dollar. That's what's wrong with them. We shouldn't have eaten so many. We have five each. Oh. <laughs> no. Don't try to hide it. I'm no. not. I can, no. I can tell. I did. I can tell. You I did. did. No, I, I didn't. Tell. No, I did not tell go into one. labor. No, I did not. <laughs> Wait, you're crazy. <laughs> Don't, just don't be scared of it. Okay. It's gonna hurt a lot. What if I just don't want to? Oh, come on. Yeah. All the cousins are watching. This is gonna give you major props with all the cousins. You hold it and I'll light it and it'll look really cool, okay? It's just a sparkler. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Okay. Okay, go. Go. I'm ready. I'm glad you practiced. I'm glad you practiced. Hey, we're all watching. Okay. All right, it's lit. Let's get close to your fingertips. You're going to all the way down. Okay, I did it! I did it! That was good. That was really good. Did it? See, guys, cousins. Okay. I told you he was fine. I told you he was fine. Okay, take off your pants. Okay, boy. Boy, this is a big step. This is a big step. Usually they wait until the second or third kind of holiday event to start making us take our pants off, but it's a good sign. I want to know what kind of underwear you got on. Because if it's white, you're out. It better be something cool and manly, like trucks and camo. I mean, look, if you're, if you're comfortable with no, it, you look, can do it. Hey, I held a sprinkler or sparkler today. We okay. did. We all saw it. No one can take that from you. We're gonna do bottle rockets next, so let's go. Whoa. Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> okay, I don't know. <laughs> What's that from? It's fucking cool. What? It's really fucking cool. Shut up, man. This is a good sign, Troy. This is a good sign that they're whispering like this without us. It's all right. What's that from? What's that woodpecker from? <laughs> from cartoons. What cartoon? I ain't never seen no cartoon. Nothing like that. that's on the yeah. Cartoon it's Network. Woody, Woody Woodpecker. You guys are asking a lot of questions. Well, who? Woody Woodpecker. It's Woody Woodpecker. We've seen it. I haven't. That's why I'm asking, Troy. And obviously, I have. 
Yeah. Yeah. They're being really confusing about this. Obviously, <laughs> obviously he would. All right, you got past the cousins, but now it's time for the uncles. <laughs> what you got? It's bottle rocket time. Are you ready for that? <laughs> uncles are only impressive at something that could literally blow a limb off. Okay. I want to feel the heat. Wait, are you guys talking full Roman candles? There's a lot of Coors Lights cans. <laughs> I want to feel fucking anything anymore. Yeah. <laughs> right. you, know, you know what? At this point, I don't fucking care. Put it in my hand. I'll do it. Okay. I fucking wish I was still a cousin. Yeah. What's your name? Cousin to uncle in this family. That's how it works. All right, I'm going to... Nothing. You're still not feeling anything? Oh, man. I'm handing you this M80. It's not lit yet. You gotta light that motherfucker. <laughs> you gotta light it. I can't. I can't. I understand. I, I just <laughs> light it off my cigarette. Yeah. Just light it off his cigarette, real close to his face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you blow his face off, he'll feel something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how does this one work? We're passing right. around. We're passing around. Passing around. Passing around. Passing around. Passing around. Passing around. <laughs> He's just holding on to it! It's gonna be so cool when it finally explodes. <laughs> so, you passed the uncle's test, and now it's time for your grandpa's racist friends to... <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. I've never had shit all over me before. <laughs> <laughs> Are you pulling it off? I don't feel like it. Paper towel, I don't feel like it. I don't think he's coming back. I think I'm going to be in this trash can forever. <laughs> One day you're on top of the world, you're the favorite underwear. Next to a dirty tampon now. Damn it, I didn't know you were here. Oh, nasty. Oh, nasty. Oh, so slender. Unnatural. What does that mean? It means everybody needs a tampon. Every woman. What does that mean? It means God made me okay. Well, natural. It's me. Natural fiber. Use syringe. What? <laughs> Man, this trash can. And IKEA is full of the worst shit. <laughs> well, you guys have all been used for your purpose. And I'm supposed to be a forever product. I'm favorite. I'm top dog. Wait, are you just underwear? Yeah, yeah I'm underwear. I just got shit all over me, so you can't tell. You're a forever product. Now, in what world is underwear a product? Yeah, what world? <laughs> oh, hey. I didn't get eaten. Five was too many. Okay, me both. <laughs> <laughs> so when I a pair of underwear, they think I'm going to wear this underwear as much as possible, and I was favorite pair. All other pairs bowed before me. <laughs> I got all the balls. That's, true. That's how what underwear thinks of, like, women. You get it. <laughs> the balls were always into me. They were always into me. <laughs> your life now. You live with us. Yeah, we're a family here. Oh, yeah, we're <laughs> Oh, whoa. Hey. Oh, hey. Just a used band-aid. Oh. <laughs> really not impressive. <laughs> hey, everybody's welcome. It's true. Yeah, I get everybody's it. Everybody's welcome. I don't belong here, though. Don't you guys are all used. I'm not used. I wasn't used. Okay. I was. But, like, we're kind of natural and, like, shit kind of isn't. Yeah. If you weren't supposed to be shit. used, people would just wear pants. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the whole purpose of the buffer layer is not to protect, like, you confuse yourself with actual pants. Oh, no! <laughs> It's tough to have Is a Is that the first time someone yeah. said it to you? I I think I thought I was pants. <laughs> <laughs> Have a me. 
Matrix moment where they <laughs> step out of the <laughs> and realize what they really are. <laughs> That was awesome. That felt like a family reunion. That was so wonderful. Wow, that was incredible. Such deep philosophical questions we answered about pants and underwear. That was beautiful. I love that. Um, can we have some more suggestions? Your mother. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, can I have literally anything else? Tomatoes? Oh my God. Yes, this man knows about Oklahoma. We do have tornadoes. Thank you so much for asking. <laughs> A tornado make oh, I okay, okay. Tornadoes make me think of the trailer that my grandparents lived in when I grew up, um, which makes me think of trout fishing, which makes me think of a time that we were trout fishing and a tornado tried to destroy the trailer that we were in. And so this is the story that I'm about to tell you all. It's good to give people an outline of a story that you're about to tell. So they know what the key moments of the story are. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, so when I was a little kid, my my grandparents had this like very rickety old travel trailer, and they would it was s smaller than the trailer that they lived in full time, <laughs> uh, which is an important detail about this story actually. Um, and we would take that little travel trailer all over all of Oklahoma and uh, on a good weekend, Arkansas and places like Missouri and you know, the places that you really want to go. Uh, and my my grandfather is this like incredible outdoorsman. He's like this, this wonderful, like big burly man, like taught me how to fish and hunt and like work on motorcycles. And like, oh, I, I attribute so much of like the good things in my life to my grandfather. And he would make a point where every year for the 4th of July, we would go to this place called Called Roaring River State Park and if you ask me where that is I don't know but I was there all the time um, it was very impactful for my childhood because what we would do is they would have this huge trout like like hatchery basically where they just like and you know I know we're in Montana and we hate that shit but you know I was a kid it was pretty fun there was just like a thousand giant trout that I could catch at all times I was, I was cheating I was cheating at fishing is what I was doing oh, that's winning that's winning at fishing yes but I'm catching them absolutely alright I like it here this is fun yeah this is good. and uh, I remember one morning we woke up and we wake up at like 4.30 in the morning, and my grandfather had this, like, like rusted out old pickup truck, and if I was a good boy, he would let me, like, change the gears in the truck as we were, like, going fishing in the morning, and I remember we went fishing, and we, it was just lights out. It was, like, crazy. Like, we caught our limit in, like, 30 minutes. It was awesome, and I was so stoked. I was like, I was like, this is the best day of fishing of my life, Papa. My life is different now. I'm an angler. <laughs> and, uh, and then he was like, we're about to get our shit rocked by this storm, dude. And I, like, I didn't care about about it at all. All I, all I cared about was like the, the fish that I caught and I wanted to take them back to the trailer and do a big fish fry with my family and like that that's what I wanted to do. So we get back to the trailer and do you guys do you know about funnel clouds? You said tornadoes. Yeah. So when, there's there's warnings for a tornado. There are a lot of them. And sometimes there are these things called funnel clouds. And a funnel cloud is a giant cloud that turns into a tornado and it makes the sound of a train for some reason. It's incredibly ominous. It is downright terrifying. And I remember getting back to the trailer and I just have like my big arm full of fish and I'm like, I just want to show my grandma so that we can all start this fish fry. And then like my grandpa says, that's the funnel cloud. And I realized that we're in for a really terrible night uh, because instead of having like a beautiful family fish fry, we have a tornado that comes straight through the park that we are staying in. Uh, and I remember like holding my grandparents' dog as the tornado like, ro like rocks our trailer onto like two wheels and I think even in that moment I was like this is this is like white trash history this is amazing what we're being a part of this is like this is a real you know coming of age story for white trash people from Oklahoma and I'm having mine right now and I'm really thankful for that actually um, 
And I remember I, I was so nervous because I, I was like, oh my God, my fish, the tornado is going to take my fish, is a fire. Because uh, I was a child and I didn't know how the world worked. Uh, <laughs> no one cared about the fish I caught that day. Uh, and I remember, like, my grandparents wouldn't let me go out into the tornado to check on my fish because they cared about my safety, I think. Um, and I just remember being locked in this trailer, like, waiting to go out. And it's literally rocking us back and forth like this. And I'm just waiting to see if I can go out and check on the trout that I caught. Um, and that's the way I still live my life to this day. And, uh, okay, and that's my story. set on her yeah oh, yeah like okay. we didn't have like okay. exactly the right okay. vibe Not a bunch of, you know wasn't into your big conversation no no did she you talk it. about your trophies uh you know i have the, i didn't think about that so uh, so you got that one bowling no that's cool well and then well, you said there was a smaller one mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, well, that's, that's cool. So I guess if she doesn't appreciate you for all your great big accomplishments, yeah. sweetheart. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I think, I think there's bigger things for me oh. in this life. And also that party, they, they weren't that cool. You only had one conversation. <laughs> yeah. That is not, that is small for you. Yeah. Yeah. Normally you yeah. grab a big load of conversations. Yeah. I definitely do. That's what I do, mom. And I'm glad that you uh, believe in me. Here. Did I hear somebody had a big conversation? Oh, he's it, was, a, it, was a, it was just he's a mid size. It was just a regular good boy. You being a good boy? It was just a, was just a regular mid size. That sounds oh, like a good oh, boy. boy. <laughs> I'd like to ask a couple of questions. I noticed when you talk about a lot of your stories and your conversations, you always refer to conversations in what I think of as strongly sexual terms. Uh, I'm always talking about how big it is and how much of a load you deliver. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of like, I just kind of, I got, I pumped the words in there and then uh, you know, I never know what's going to come out. Now, yeah. Yeah. now you're doing it to me. <laughs> this is what I, I'm, I'm. Listen, I, you're a, you're a therapist. You're not a, don't know conversations like I you don't you don't know how to really like ram it ram it in you know, I'm pretty I got a I got I got some big I know some big words I know some big, in, in, in your terms I'm more of a receiver Long 